Hi, um, this is Office Hour 3 of China X. Uh, you'll notice that I'm not next to Bill Kirby. He's away, uh, and we've asked Yuan uh, here from Harvard to, to join me in the office hour. You will have seen her in this module uh, earlier and in the previous module as well. Now, I just, before we begin to respond to some of the things you wrote in the forums, I wanted to just let you know that we've been able to deal with some of your requests. One is uh, that uh, people ask for pinyin uh, tone marks in the romanization, in the pinyin, in the glossary, and we've been able to add that. Uh, you notice also that last week edX had a technical problem, but that's been fixed. Um, our discussion forums have gotten a bit better, at least we've done, been able to make some progress with them in terms of uh, making them, dividing them up a bit. And we really do appreciate those of you who've been helping others by answering their questions and responding to them. Uh, well, let's turn right away to uh, the issues at hand. Now, uh, Yuan, we've been having some people uh, talk about this. We have four different threads. We, the first is the A to G thread, and I think you picked something out for us. Yeah. So, so what we thought we'd do is, is one of us would sort of tell, give you the gist of somebody, somebody's comment, and then the other person would respond as they saw fit. Sure. Okay. Um, so in the A to G thread, an, an anonymous person, no, I'm, I'm sorry, not anonymous, Ed Foss, um, writes that he thinks the mandate of heaven that the Zhou used had one great advantage in terms of, of promoting itself and that it would allow an alternative system mm -hmm. uh, that the Zhou claimed legitimation but they also claimed they could be overthrown. Mm -hmm. And he sees this as more democratic. What do you think? Um, I think I think I, I understand where Ed Falls tries to get to. So he wants to um, to, to, to say that this concept of the mandate, um, that the mandate from the heaven is a higher concept uh, against which that different regime mm -hmm. can try to legitimate itself and if it doesn't work and, and then people can disapprove it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if it's the equivalent to a democratic system because in contemporary world um, our common sense of a democracy is that um, the citizens get um, mm -hmm. to make a to make a choice mm -hmm. uh, on who they want um, to be the leader to True. to rule the country. So, and, and but the of Joe course, people didn't have that. Now, right. I don't think right. They, they okay. Had. Okay. Um, Ian Murray in the H to N thread. Well, you've uh, looked at that. Yeah, it is. Um, so this post is chosen from the H to N thread by Ian Murray, and. Um, and these students point out uh, several different aspects about the, king, the Shang system. For instance, he mentioned that uh, the Shang king relies on the divination, where our bones, and uh, it practiced human sacrifice, and uh, so it increased the resentment among the lower classes and people, and who eventually rebelled. Mm -hmm. And it also. Um, and instead, for the for the Zhou dynasty, the Zhou system, um, they introduced a, a heavenly mandate concept, and um, and they create epic poems and propaganda sources to spread their uh, ideas and values, and and they reduced the human sacrifice, and therefore. Um, they were able to gain more popular approval okay. from lower classes. Okay. Okay. So in, in mm -hmm. talking about these two regimes in such a way, I think the students made a choice. Mm -hmm. um, sure, sure. Well, I think that I, I'm not sure that the lower classes mm -hmm. matter all that much. I, it, it struck me point, yeah. when I was reading the, uh, the announcement at Shao, the Shao the yeah. Gao, that in fact it's very much aimed at sort of nobility and, and people who govern. Uh, yes. both the Shang and the Zhou. Yeah. Um, but I do think that he's right in some sense that there is a sense of a Zhou appeal yes. uh, through its writing to a larger audience. It's mm -hmm. not just me talking to the gods mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. to my ancestors. Mm -hmm. It's me talking to the people who are ruled. Mm -hmm. I think the poem Wen Wang was a very good example of that. Yes. King Wen was mm -hmm. a good example of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. On the uh, O to T thread, somebody who goes by the name Sparks Will Fly says, um, that they see in the Joe system 
that two things that, that people would have wanted. One was unity, and the other was the power to overthrow the ruler. So we, I think we've covered this issue of the power to overthrow the ruler. Mm -hmm. But he makes the point that uh, he thinks the mandate of heaven is something that unified all of the Jungworen, the people of the central states, not just certain clans. Um, and, and he thinks also that, in fact, it was less feudal, that it was more centralized. Uh, what do you think of that? First, I'm not really sure whether the concept of Zhongguoren was there. Mm -hmm. um, at this point. At this point. Right, right. Uh, that's a much later concept, mm -hmm, I'd mm -hmm. say. Um, and also, I'm not sure it was less a feudal system. I see. I see. Uh, because we, we do see that the whole spring and autumn and warring state period mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. is a period where you have a you have a central government, but um, most of the different regions of the whole kingdoms were ruled by very different okay. local lords. Okay. Okay. Um, so I still, though, I, I sort of like Sparks Will Fly's point that that the Joe actually offered something that people could share. I think that's that's true. I think perhaps um, I think what he perhaps wants to say, he or she perhaps want to say, is that there is a kind of overarching value that mm. the 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 Zhou, uh, the rituals, rich, the rituals try to try to show that okay. you might come from very different places, and you might even stay in the old the area where the old Shang um, ruled. Uh, but as long as you uh, join in the ritual and share certain aspect of value, and then you are recognized as a part of this okay. community. Nice. Yeah. So our last one is from Texacan, a new to Z3. What does he have to say? So I, I think this is a very interesting comment because he or she um, really didn't make a choice because mm. I think the student is, is pretty much a modernist because mm. he says that it doesn't matter, I mean, neither of them really would, would really work. In the end, they would all fall. Well, the Shang and the Zhou, yeah, I, I think that's true, that they would all fall, to tell you the truth. I agree, but doesn't it matter how you rule until you fall? That's the question I would ask. And I think that uh, if we have a choice, I think most of the people we've been reading here in the forums seem to have preferred Zhou, and that was true for the rest of Chinese history as well. And in fact, this system would last at least for another 3,000 years. In some sense, there, yeah. there's no, uh, some of the Zhou ideas. Some of the ideas. Yeah, that's so right. that, that really had a very big right. historical influence. Yeah. Uh, final thing, I want to thank those of you who've been writing to us. We've gotten some absolutely wonderful letters, some emails uh, from Norway, from Chinese students studying at the University of Oxford in the UK. Um, we we, of course, like to be flattered, I have to admit. But uh, you're actually, you, you've captured some of the things we were trying to do with this course. I'm going to ask, in fact, that, that we put these emails on, on the course, uh, web, on, on our Harvard X, in somewhere where extra resources or something like this so people can see them. I think they're just great. Thanks a lot. Oh, next week, we are going to be reading an article by... David Keatley. Starting. starting tomorrow. Oh, next week, starting tomorrow. Yes, I yes. have to be reminded that, that we're about to open the, the new module. Um, well, we give it, Bill and I were able to, uh, a week or so ago, to film an introduction to that and tell you what we have in mind. See you there. <laughs>